knew that within, you know, three days of arriving in Paris that I would actually be meeting, you know, wow. the fashion god. Wow. So, you know, you know, they call, put the calls out to the agencies. We need girls to do fittings, this type of girl, blah, 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 blah. So they send me in, and I just re- remember arriving at Think Avenue Marceau or 5 mm-hmm. Avenue Marceau, where yes, that the, the is. movie. You know, he, there's a movie about on one of the collections that he did, at that famous Think address. Av- the Picasso movie? The Picasso collection? Uh, yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes. You can tell now that I have no life, but go ahead. <laughs> I love that. So I go to St. Avenue Marceau, and there are these beautiful, like, it looked like 10 feet tall wooden doors with wow. these gilded golden handles. And you buzz the buzzer, and someone pushes from the inside, and the doors automatically open. And they open into this marble staircase. And there's, at the top of the staircase, there's this French lady who's so chic. She puts, I mean, she put the super, she put the capital S in chic, and she's sitting wow. there. Wow. And, of course, she she greets you in French. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, bonjour, bienvenue, mm-hmm. uh, chez Saint Laurent, how can I help you? Mm-hmm. And I'm standing there. It was like time stood still. Uh-huh. Because it's one thing to have the dream to want to do something, but when that dream starts to become a reality and the dream far exceeds, I mean, the reality far exceeds your dream, yes. it just becomes like, holy moly. So it's like time stood still. Yes. I was in this tunnel. <laughs> it wasn't an outer body experience, I don't think. Wow. And I was, I was walking up the steps. I felt like I was floating to this lady. And I just remember my mouth moving, and I think words came out that said, I have an appointment with Nicole to uh, work it in the cabin. And then, you know, she, she realized that I didn't speak French yet, mm-hmm. and she said, follow me. And she got up, and she was, you know, tall and gorgeous, and she was dressed, of course, from head to toe in couture Yves Saint Laurent, and she smelled amazing. Wow. And then I follow her, like, to where the girls are in the cabin, and then I walk in, and Nicole is a blonde American, actually, mm-hmm. the one who ran the cabin. She was a former Yves Saint Laurent model, and she ran the cabin. So I walked in, and she's like, you know, hi. And she spoke to me in American English, and then I kind of, like, snapped out of it a little bit. Sure. And then uh, she's like, okay, what's your name? Let me see your book. And she looks at my book, which basically had, like, a bunch of test photos and school pictures (laughs) that my agency arranged to look as good as it could. And uh, she's like, okay, I need you to try something on. And I could not believe it. I almost fainted when she said that. Because, I mean, you you know, know, the couple days before I was going to all these designers are like, no, thank you, goodbye, don't come back, we don't like you, we don't need you, have a nice right. life. Right. You know, like, you hand them your book, they look at the first page, slam it, and give it back to you, and don't even say goodbye. They just go, next. And you're just standing there going, okay, what do I do now? Mm-hmm. So I walk in, she's nice to me, and then they put me in um, high heels, black stockings, red lipstick. Wow. That's what you have to have on to see Mr. Saint Laurent, or you're not getting in. So I get in, and, like, you know, there's someone there doing makeup, and they, you know, powder me up, and they put you in the white coat. And then you go, and you stand, you go to one lady. Mm-hmm. Wait, stop here. And then you go, to, you know, and you wait, and then they check you. And then you go to another lady right outside the door where, his acti- where he actually works inside the atelier. Mm-hmm. And then you wait there outside the door. And then his personal assistant, um, uh, uh, Lulu de la Falaise, mm-hmm. you know, who actually is the, ex- well, at that time was the accessories designer. Mm-hmm. And then uh, Monsieur Hubert, his uh, business partner, they're all in there. And then you come in, okay, you're outside the door. Then the door opens, and then you stand inside the door. Then you have to wait until they all discuss, and they kind of look at you, and you're standing there with your knees knocking, and it's beautiful. Everything is, like, hand-painted and French and gilded and golden and wow. tour gowns flowing and fabrics, and it all smells so well. It's just out of body. So then, okay, then they have to approve you, and then if they approve you, you get to try a garment on. So I went, and they say, put this on, and then you oh. put it on, and you're standing there. And by that time, you got to, like, be striking a pose. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I figured that out. I'm standing there and I'm posing and they look at you and they t- turn around, look, can you, wa- you know, walk a little bit? Mm-hmm. And then they can be, okay, stand. And then they push you to the back and they go try something else on. And while you're trying it on, someone's back there and they say, wait. 
and then everything is quiet. And then all of the ladies who take care of that back room, they're like silent and basically bowing their heads. And then Miss mm-hmm. then this little dog comes running out. <laughs> <laughs> and the dog sits next to this like chair, which is like a throne in my mind. And then Mr. Saint Laurent comes out and he's beautiful. Oh. He's just beautiful. Oh. He's like Santa Claus and your favorite uncle and everybody all rolled into one. And then he comes in and everybody's shuffling and, you know, mm-hmm. bring the other girls out who didn't make the cut. And, you know, he comes in and um, they're discussing something in French. And at that time I didn't understand. And, mm-hmm. you know, then the more the experienced models who are in the show are standing there and they're like fabulous and decadent and aloof and like life is wonderful and they're just mm-hmm. skinny and, and gorgeous. And then he, you know, he talks to one of them and tells them how perfect they are. Then they sashay off, and then it, you're standing in the back, and it's your turn. He sits down, and then he speaks to you in French, and he's like, uh, uh, "S'il vous plaît, marchez." And then you're like, standing there. Oh my God, what did he say? And then he realizes that I didn't speak French. No one else would say anything. The room was silent. And then he realizes I didn't speak French, and he says, "Can you walk?" in a very heavy French accent. And then oh. I'm like, oh, that's what he said. And so oh, I like, okay. you know, I do my thing that I was taught by Sterling in those mm-hmm. times. And I walk and I turn, I put, you know, I present myself. And then he says, you. At that time, I didn't understand what it means. Now I know it means magnificent. Yes. Yes. And then, or marvelous, you know, whatever. And then he puts, and then he's like, he has me put on another garment. I show that. I'm starting to build confidence. And then he's like, merci beaucoup. And then I'm standing there. He gets up. The little dog walks off. He goes. The door shut. And I'm standing there. And then they all are like, you know, hustling around, doing, going on to the next thing. And I'm mm-hmm. still standing there. And they're like, oh, you can go now. <laughs> I'm like, okay. <laughs> and then the next thing I know, the next day my agency got a call. I was hired to be a cabin girl. And that's when it all started. That, you know what? That's a movie. <laughs> yes. Let me tell you, I'm sitting here yeah. about to cry, and yeah. I love the guide, but I yeah. think that's the next project. You yeah. have to talk.